There's lots of people walking around in the east end of London that's been hit on the chin by Reggie. But I wouldn't say that about Ronnie. It'd be a different kettle of fish with Ronnie, because Ronnie wouldn't be happy with just hitting you on the chin. He'd look for you until he found you and he would hurt you. Simple as that. You would fear Ronnie. And there's no two ways about it. If Reggie sent for you and wanted to see you in Valence Road, you'd go round and see him. You'd have a cup of tea with him and you'd walk out. If Ronnie sent for you, you'd take t six pairs of pants with you. That's the difference between the two of them. He was feared. And anybody that said they wasn't frightened of him is telling lies. You know, I mean, I've heard loads of rubbish in the papers and seen all the rest of it. And I tell you what, if the man was alive today, they would be shitting theirself. You know, in case he did ever get out. Reg, all his life, had this thing that he had to look after this sick, unstable, identical twin brother. And he did look after him. The only trouble was the unstable, mentally sick twin was the dominant. If Ronnie hadn't been quite so balmy and hadn't killed George Cornell because he's supposed to have called him the fat poof, they'd be stone rich geezers. They were in most of the frauds in the East End, a lot of protection, a lot of rackets. They really, really didn't need to kill people. But once that killing had happened, then that increased their terror ratio enormously, you see, particularly with Ronnie. Francis Bacon, incidentally, who also knew him, said he had the most frightening face he'd ever seen, which I think from Francis Bacon is quite something. He was a paranoid schizophrenic and he was mad. But he, he was fascinated by this whole illusory world of gangsterdom. For Ronnie, I think the, the barriers between real crime and film crime were very blurred, and I think he often stepped over them. I've been in pubs in the East End, and the crazy are coming, and the pub had empty. People were so afraid of him. The dad had a very driving force behind the two of them. And being twins and brothers, they, they urged each other on and tried to, uh, like one would try and do better than the other one. I've done that, you know, I've got this and I've, I've managed to do this. I mean, uh, Ronnie Craig was a stronger personality out of the two the more dominant of the two. That you knew they was they was for fame and uh, uh, maybe not fortune, but they they was gonna make their mark on the world, you know, from young, you knew that. I mean I'm in several photographs from the early days, but I was only uh, trying to keep a low profile, even though I was there at these different events and meetings over the years, I was um a lot of people didn't really know what, why I was there or what I was up to or what I was doing. But I just had, they invited me to lots of openings of, of different gymnasiums and clubs. And and, um, and I was put in different bits of action that they had going. Because um, they needed me as an a ally, you know, because it would give them a bit more strength to know that uh, I was behind the scenes of the who, would, who could come in with a sort of um, counter-punch or if they got if needed any help. And I think I must have helped them to, to get to where they were, you know, by, by being associated with them. To be honest with you, all I know is, is there's seven people that they have killed. There's probably more. I don't know, but that's they're, they're some of the people that I know that they have killed. I think they were so carried away by the role they'd got themselves into as gangster killers, they had to do it finally. So Ron murdered George Cornell in the Blind Beggar pub. His bloodlust was sated for a while, but somehow it wasn't enough. He knew the taboo on killing had to be broken again on the craze bloody road to fame. The twins had a twisted plan for fame. They would murder their way into the history books.
The twins' competitiveness was escalating dangerously. Reg was under pressure to emulate his homicidal brother Ron and kill someone. They were all in competition. And it's this strain between the two of them that one side of them, they adored each other, they lived for each other. And the other side, they hated each other. So far, violence had rewarded them well. They fulfilled their West End dream and bought a nightclub, Esmeralda's Barn. They hoped the club would provide the key to the glittering society they craved. I think they always longed to be part of the establishment. Rather like the American Mafia Godfathers becoming legit. They would have loved to have been legit and to have been accepted into the other world, not the underworld, but the above, above the ground world. And their great bid for this was that when they left the East End, bought Esmeralda's barn and moved into Knightsbridge. And if you saw them two walk into a, a nightclub, um, suited and booted, respectable, they just sit down quietly, look around, and they had that look about them. You know I mean, that nobody would mess around. I think it was rather like the arrival of a film star. And this was the George Raft effect. You know, they'd walk in looking rather menacing. And they always had acolytes with them, always a following, an entourage. They were just surrounded by men. And it was this sort of arrival of the twins. And a silence would fall. They did have an aura. And so the Crays were able to continue blackmailing, maiming, or murdering anyone who stood in their way. It was what Ron wanted. In the end, you've got this pair of linked paranoid schizophrenics who were in charge of London but not in charge of themselves and they, they were wretched it's a miserable fate Ron boasted about having personally killed a man he goaded Reg saying that if he could kill why couldn't his brother do the same it was a thing with it with Reg and Money that if Bonnie did something, then he would like Reggie Port, he had to do it as well. And that's how they was. He does it, I'll do it. Like, you know, you can do it, I can do it. Ron cranked up the pressure. He began taunting Reg in public. Bonnie's shouting out to him, uh, <clears throat> well, if you're going to shoot anybody, make sure you shoot him in the head, like I did Cornell. Out loud. Maybe because of Ronnie killing uh, Cornell, he thought he had to kill, he had to do one and do a murder as well. 